We welcome Texas head coach Jared Elliott, our student athletes are Madison Skinner and Aza O'Neill, and we'll ask coach for an opening statement. We are extremely excited to be back at the Final Four, um, and I'm so proud of the, the process that this team went through, and just, you know, as, as a coach, you play for, or you coach for your players, and to see the joy that they have in their, in their faces, and to be able to extend the time that we have with them is super special to me, super special to our coaches in the university, and uh, we take a lot of pride representing Texas, and we're excited for uh, a great venue. Tampa Bay has already shown us a lot of love and, and the welcoming and it just means so much to, to always be a part of this Final Four because it's something that we never take for granted. And we'll start with questions. Joey, we'll start back there. Coach Elliott, you were here in 2009 and the event has ob obviously grown as has the city. First of all, what did you think of the reception last night and just if you think back to then to now, what, what, what kind of different experience is this for the, for the athletes? Yeah, I mean, I think Tampa should be hosting it every single year. I think they, they get super excited about it. I think it's a great location for weather. And for our players and our coaches and our administration to kind of walk off the plane last night and see that welcoming party was super special. It, it means a lot to, to me to, to show that our team and our sport means a lot, uh, that our players mean a lot to these young athletes and that they get to look up to them. And it was just a wonderful welcoming. And then they just topped it off with that. When we get back to the hotel, there's a huge band welcoming us. and. Uh, a nice little speech and some just a lot of special moments that they've already shown us. So where the sport has grown is tremendous. Um, I still think that 2009 is one of the best finals uh, in the history of all ball. People haven't watched that. Um, but it was a, a back and forth battle that is probably my toughest loss that we've ever had. You know, losing 16-14 here after being up 2-0 to a Penn State team that I think had won 111 in a row. But um, I'm excited to be back. Um, and. Uh, it's just a wonderful city. Go to the back row there, please. Lee Feinspach from VolleyballMag.com. You, you guys are markedly better the last few weeks than the previous part of the season. Was there a turning point? Is there anything in particular you put your, your hands on? Not, not your, you two individually, I mean the Texas team. I just think we stayed really committed to getting better. We knew that we wanted to peak in December, not September or October. And we just really kept working hard in the gym and knew that eventually it's all going to click. And like you said, lately it's really been clicking for us. And I think that just goes to show how committed our coaches are to staying on us and staying confident in our abilities. And then with one another, like we, we haven't had any doubt or stress in our minds throughout the whole year. Like we knew that everyone here is capable of doing their job. So just staying strong with the process and it got us here. Yeah, it's spot on. Um, I would just say just trusting our training and trusting um, all the practices and all the things that we were doing behind the scenes from our nutrition to our sleep to um, all the crucial things that play a role that are off the court. Um, just keep trusting the process and staying committed to what we we're trying to accomplish and um, just being the best we can every single day and growing our connection on and off the court and our chemistry and it's paying off obviously and like I just said like we're peaking right now and it's it's a great feeling knowing that all our hard work is paying off and um, still a long way to go but it's exciting for sure. And go to the first row here please. Yeah, I was just wondering if both players you talk, talk about this, as much experience as you two have, how have you sort of helped Ella come along as a, as a young setter and the way that that um, is a mentorship I think you guys have both had with her? Yeah, really just emphasizing with her that nothing needs to be perfect. I know coming into this program as a freshman trying to run the offense is a really daunting task to do, and I know she feels a lot of pressure on herself to do all these incredible things. And I think we've done a really good job of just having good dialogue and feedback that no one's expecting you to be playing at this like 1,000% level and doing everything perfect all the time because that's that's not expected from anyone. But I think Ella and I have had a really good feedback loop, like the middle – setter connection is obviously really important and that wasn't where we wanted it to be at the beginning of the year but we spent a lot of time in positionals and just working on that connection with one another and I think we found a way to properly communicate with one another and know like what each person needs whether it's feedback or asking questions and like Maddie said we've been fostering our relationships off the court as well so throughout the whole season I think we've just gotten a lot closer and been able to have that positive feedback with one another. I think I'll just add to that that 
the maturity that you see these bigger than life players that are sitting up here, but the quality of people that they are. And, you know, when you have a young setter, there's a lot of frustrations early on. And you could never see it from the way that they wore it on their sleeve, the way that they talked to the player, to Ella. And they were always just kind of in her corner supporting her and just telling her that it was going to get to this point. And, you know, they could have ruined her confidence early on, but because of the women they are, they just were such good teammates and added to her confidence and gave her a lot of good things to think about. Back row. Madison and Asia, when you have a moment like your team had in the region semifinals where you're facing a match point and the end could be right there and you get out of it and you come to a place like this, what, what does it do to your team to confront the end face to face and push through and, and here we are? I mean, we talk about confidence all the time and um, you never want to walk into a match or be in the middle of a set expecting yourself to lose. And so we all just looked at each other in the eye and we're like, we're winning this thing. We're taking this set and there's no other option. Um, and so everyone was kind of bought into that common idea and um, just found another gear, to be honest, and just found another level of confidence and just energy and uh, momentum on our side. And so I just say we just all believe from the get go and it's exciting to be here. But um, there wasn't a doubt in our mind that we had the capability of just taking it. And um, obviously it took a lot of energy and um, investment over time. But um, yeah, we just had confidence in one another and what we had trained, I mean, for so long and all the work that we put in up to this point. We'll go down here yeah. to the first row, please. <laughs> It's from USA Today, also representing the American statesman here today. Um, for the for the coach, um, I realized it's not like you have players who are short, but how do you get your team ready to play against 6'9 and 6'7? Well, I think we have a super competitive gym, and we see big blocks all the time in our gym. Obviously, the Nebraska, uh, Wisconsin is really big, and I think one of the things we have is super dynamic athletes. You know, we're, we're, we have our own physicality, we have our own speed, and things that we can do. So. Um, it's part of the fun matchups. It, it, you know, it's always trying to figure out the puzzle of how to beat teams. And some teams are super fast, some teams are a little bit bigger, and it's going to be the, the component that we've got to be able to figure out. But we'll have a, we have a great coaching staff that can get them ready. I think our players are in this great mindset right now, and I think they've got a little chip on their shoulder to, to go out and find a way to be able to make that happen. We can go in the first row here, please. For both players and starting with Madison, with all the pomp and circumstance sur surrounding the trip, it's still a business trip. You got to win two games. How do you balance something that you really want to remember with let's remember what we're here for? Yeah, I mean, it helps having experience. I mean, I've been here a couple times. And so um, it's funny because one of my teammates were like, you're so calm, literally walking in here. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, it's exciting, but it's nothing new. And um, you got to find that balance of just enjoying in the process and finding joy in it. And also just knowing that we're here for business and um, don't want to walk home empty handed. So um, it's going to be a challenge for our underclassmen and people that have never been in here. But it's exciting just to be able to embrace all of this and um, celebrate our hard work up to this point. Point. But yeah, it's a mindset thing and just got to lock in for the rest of the trip. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely a mindset thing. Um, and I also realized every Final Four you've gone to, I've gone to. So that's kind of fun. That's cute. But like she said, we've been here uh, a couple times now. But I'm the type of person that when we're off, like I want to have fun and enjoy these moments and be here with my teammates because like my college career is almost coming to an end at this point. But when we're on, we're on. And I think we have a really good mindset switch as a team in general so you want to enjoy the moments but when it's time to practice or it's game time like we're in it and all the other stuff is just out the door we can go back to the corner there please coach a follow-up to the last answer you gave uh, talking about puzzle pieces trying to beat teams what have been the biggest puzzle pieces for you this year uh, that you hope to see over the next couple days well i think it's our process has been slower than normal, right? I think we started off the season five and three, and now we're 20 and one the last, or close to that. So it, one, one was getting healthy, right? One was developing Ella to be able to set different kind of balls and get our systemat systematic approach a lot better so that we could strategically take advantage of matchups that we have or things that we want to be able to do. And, um, and then third was the confidence of our players being stick together. You know, all this stuff that you guys are talking about starts in the practice gym, and it starts with players that are not even starting on our team, um, that have just been showing up every single day and putting stress on our team every moment. And the confidence from winning these games or where we are at is all developed in the, in the, 
in the practice gym. And this team is not a team that, you know, I've had teams where they make constant decisions not to compete, constant decisions not to go for balls. And so when we're in those crunch times, I mean, we've had it. We were down 24-19 to Baylor. We've been way down at TCU and kind of down and out. We've had a lot of times where we've been in situations where it's been really uncomfortable. But you could see the fight that we had, even though the Tennessee match, in my mind, was pretty ugly. Uh, it got pretty ugly after the first set. And uh, we just kind of found ways to kind of stick together and, and play. So there's, you don't need to win a championship. You don't need to play perfect to win a national championship. You've got to be good enough that night. You've got to find the grit. And you've got to find ways to win. And so when we were down, out, down and out at Tennessee, you know, we found a way to be able to do that. And that says a lot about these women and the trust that they have and trust in the system. And, um, you know, the next night was a lot smoother for us in terms of our confidence level. Typically, we've always played better when we play big name T-shirt teams that, like a Wisconsin or a Penn, uh, Penn State or Stanford or Nebraska. You know, it's it's a lot easier to go into those matches. Go to row two here, Matt. Hey, Coach uh, Matt Baker with the Tampa Bay Times. The, the Big Twelve has evolved quite a bit since you've uh, been in, in that chair. Um, how what kind of an impact it, has that had on, on your, you know, getting to this stage, both in terms of it's obviously more spread out and then bigger names in there that kind of challenges you throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, I've got really fond memories and great things to say about the Big 12. It's been a big part of my life and my career. And, um, you know, to see it evolve with BYU and some of those teams, the competition is always great. Um, I think you're starting to see it across the, every, every big conference is it just gets better and better. So, as, as you know, as a coach, you don't want to be in stressful situations, but you do. <laughs> So you need to kind of go through that fire a little bit to understand your team, understand that makeup. And again, this season was really up and down for us, um, but they stuck the course. We've seen their confidence. And you know a lot about that when you're calling timeouts and how they're behaving on the bench. And so their calmness in these situations, you can see they're confident in what they're doing. They believe in each other. Um, we haven't always had that as a program, but this year they, we can see definitely that that's continued in our program and they embrace uh, the big time environment. We can stay in that role right on the end there. How's it going? Daniel Gilman, six rotations for uh, Asia. I'm, I'm curious, when you watch film on Anna Smrek, and, and then I'd love to just kind of hear your thoughts on her and maybe any familiarities you see in her style of play and maybe any differences between you and her as well. Um, yeah, obviously she's a lot bigger than I am, a lot taller, but uh, I think just in, with them and their whole entire team, like, like Jarrett said, they're a large block, but we have a really large block in our practice gym every single day, and I think just how dynamic all of our players are that we're able to find ways around that and aren't going to get frustrated. So it'll be really fun to see because those are two really good defensive blocking teams. But um, I mean, not really anything specifically to say about her as a player or person, but I think um, we're well prepared and the coaches are gonna do a great job today in practice and in our film session, giving us ways to fight our way around the block. We can go back to the back row. Coach, you've been a part of a lot of Final Four team fields and have seen a lot. When you look at this year, three three number one, you know, regional seeds, and you're the outlier. You're the defending national champions. Is this about a quality of field as you've seen for for this event on paper? Yeah, I, I mean, even as a as a tournament as a whole, it's been super competitive, and I think. You know, this year, obviously, it's a little bit different for us, right? Last year, all the expectations were Texas, 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 and that was the talk. And now, no one's picking us. And so it's a different role for our team. But it's we feel like we have a really good team right now, and we can go on and execute at a high level. And we have confidence in what we can do. And that's all that matters, the 18 players that we're taking to go to the battle with. So uh, I, I think any team can come out of this with a victory, for sure. Uh, and I have confidence in what our team's doing. We'll go to the back row on the edge there. <laughs> Jerry, yeah, you challenged, or you had a challenge in a replay last week, and um, the decision might come down any minute now. Um, it's, it takes really long. What are your thoughts about the replay and the challenge and what has to happen? Well, I think I was a big part of the challenge system coming into play. I think it all happened when we played BYU back in 2015 or 16 when they hit a ball out and it was last to cost the match. And um, I think getting the, the replay system in place was a big component for our, of our sport. But the growth of where the sport is going, what TV needs to see, it needs to change. I mean, there, there needs to be some responsibility to be able to put the best effort to be able to showcase this game and also to be able to give teams the best shot of being able to do this. Internationally, there are not even line judges anymore. Um, the replays only take 15 seconds. The graphics are a lot better. And it's part of the evolution of sport. So uh, I've been talking, obviously, to ESPN and other places. Uh, I'm super excited that you know, our, you know when we move to the SEC, there's going to be a new system there that's in place that should be pretty good. Um, 
but it, it's there's some urgency behind it for sure because it's really really hard to see and it's really unfair to the referees and to the announcers because they're sitting there for anywhere from two to five minutes to try to figure out what the best camera angle is. We can go here on the first row. Yeah, Coach, um, what's the most difficult part of having a freshman center and what's been the most rewarding part of, of having that? I think, you know, Ella came in and obviously with a lot of accolades, but she puts a lot of pressure on herself. And if you came to our practice gym or you watch Ella play, you can never see whether she's playing good or playing bad. Um, you know, I, I think Asia hit it on it. She's put a tremendous amount of pressure on herself because she's the quarterback. And to be at Texas, there's a lot of pressure as being an athlete, right, with the fans and things that go on with the media. And for us, it's been desensitizing that a lot, you know. And when, you know, I talked to her mom and I talked to her and they're like, well, how perfect does she have to be? I'm like, she's not going to be perfect. You know, we expect her to set 60 to 70 percent of the balls good. There's going to be 30 to 40 percent of the time that it's not. And our headers will be able to find that out. So a lot for me has been desensitizing it for her. Like, we'll catch her when she falls. It's, it's can you be good with the process? Can you be good with the next point? And eliminate that thought process. And so when things get stressful, it's always hard for, for a quarterback to be able to do. But... You know, watching her set yesterday in practice, I was just like, she has grown so much and developed so much in what she's doing. And you got to see it on display in the biggest match of her career at Stanford on the road, being able to set Asia the way that she did, being able to get, you know, Madison the ball and, and find the right swings has been pretty impressive. We can go to the back corner and then we'll go first row. Coach, anything that Wisconsin does that will take a couple minutes to acclimate to that that uh, that you're kind of expecting. Yeah, we'll just see how that plays <coughs> out. Well, I think they're they're super efficient in system out of system. Uh, they're super efficient as a blocking team, right? And so we just, I mean, we've been blocked a lot this year. Um, so it's not something that's that's new. We just got to make sure that we're taking care of each other, making our making good decisions, and when those decisions need to be made. There will be times and situations where our outside hitters do not get a good ball, and are they going to close their eyes and blast? Or are they going to try to find ways to? to swing and hit the edges. Um, you know, we train it every single day of trying to hit edges and flat hands and, and mix the game up a little bit more. So it's something where we're trying to find space and do that. But, you know, you can negate a lot of that by passing well and controlling the ball well and controlling the ball from the defensive side off of off the block. I thought that's what we did really well against Stanford. You know, we got a lot of quality touches and then we were able to transition back and put pressure on teams. And so, um, yeah. It's just like any other match. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big match against. I mean, as we told our team, every round you you go, it's a little bit big, bigger, faster, and better. So um, they've been in these situations. They've been in the pressure situations, and we're here to have a lot of fun and go out and compete and do it when the time is ready. We'll go to the first row, Coach. You, your last loss was early November. Two parts. Are you starting to peak now? And the fact that you had to go five sets to beat Tennessee, and you won the national championship last year. Are you battle-tested that way? Well, I think battle-tested is a really good question. Um, you know, I think I stated on it earlier, it's like how do you deal in an adverse situation when things aren't going well? Um, we've got a lot of experience. We've got great leadership sitting up here and being able to give that confidence to our younger players. Um, and we've been here before. So I like the way that we played against Stanford. Right? And I think when we have our emotions in the right place, then we're able to kind of execute and do the things that we can. But it's going to be a battle. It's going to go back and forth. There's going to be momentum changes. And can our process be good enough to be able to sustain that? I do believe that we are in the right mindset right now. I, I have a lot of confidence in what we're doing. These two are playing tremendously well. Um, Molly, who doesn't get a lot of attention, is a really good volleyball player. And her numbers are starting to go up. And we're starting to evolve our middle. So we've got some, a lot of different keys that we can do. we just got to serve and pass well and, and take advantage of that. Go to middle row on the end, please. All right, Coach, talk about having some fun. I've got a, I've got a fun question for you. If you okay. had to guess, who do you think Nebraska fans are going to root for in your match? That's a great question. Um, well, I would imagine both Nebraska and Pittsburgh are going to, if whoever the winner of that is going to probably cheer for us, right? I mean, you're always cheering for the underdog. And so, again, I, I think we're embracing that. I think it's nice to not be the, in the front and all this. Like last year was a lot of stress to it, the expectations of trying to be able to win that. And now we can just go out and be Texas and go compete and, and have a little bit of grit and do that. So um, I'd love for them to cheer for us. We can go here. Somehow Texas and underdog don't, don't go together, <laughs> I have to say. Um, but, Coach, um, 
does this feel a little bit, I mean, it is the end of an era in terms of Texas and the Big 12 and everything you've meant to that conference volleyball-wise. I know you're, you've, been, you've known it for a while, the move, but um, how do you think that's going to change next year when you consider you're going to have Stanford in the ACC, you're going to have UCLA and USC in the Big 10? I mean, these conferences that have been so successful are going to get even more powerful in some ways. Yeah, it's well, it's really fun to think about the SEC being good in volleyball and where the sport has come. I mean, when I started in 2000, the South didn't really exist in volleyball, and now that's really starting to come along. But I've learned really fast that I, I wake up and check the news and see what conference we're going to be in, how things are changing, and what's ev the evolution of sport and all this stuff with NIL. So it's, it's, it's always changing. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, right now my goal is to – to be an influence on the SEC to really promote this sport. I think obviously women's basketball is having a lot of success and I love it. Um, I think there's two sports that we can really celebrate and be able to get behind to be able to do that. We need women's basketball to be good. We need women's volleyball to be good. And you know, I, I think we're, we're joining, at least in my, my mind, is we want to join hands with them to, to let people know how great women's sports are. And I think there's a lot of men now that are willing to sit in front of TVs and watch the entertainment that comes from these incredible athletes. And so it's now getting the SEC and the other conferences to really kind of get behind it and continue to do what they're doing. Uh, I, I feel confident about where we can head with this and where the sport is heading. And you know, thanks to you guys for all the publicity you're doing and promoting and showing and growing the game. Because this is, when you see this game live, it's, it's watching these guys jump and play and the speed of it is pretty phenomenal. <clears throat> you can go here. Um, for either of the, for either Madison or for Asia, um, have you spoken at all to Jenna Wenis about her experiences playing against Wisconsin while she was at Minnesota? We briefly chatted about it because we both played them um, in previous years. Uh, she didn't mention too much other than um, just, I mean, it's a big block, obviously, and um, she's just excited to hit against it. And the same for me. I'm like, I'm going to be swinging for some shots that maybe I don't regularly swing for, but I'm excited, and it's going to be a new challenge for us, and it's going to grow us not only right now, but just also if we play pro and in the future. So, um, yeah, we briefly chat about it. Can't give away all of our secrets, but um, we're super excited and pumped up. Back to the back corner. Asia, some ESPN commentators have called you the slide queen. And uh, so I want to ask you about the slide, how valuable that is to your team's offense, to your toolbox. And then Madison, when that's running, how it opens everything else up for the rest of the offense. Yeah, I think it is very valuable for our team, especially like in our two hitter rows. Um, we're able to spread the offense more and the block has to make a decision if they're going to just try to stay neutral or try to cheat one way or the other. So once we get that going, it really opens it up for our pins so they're not sitting there with a huge double block waiting for them. Um, but that was really our main goal with me and Ella for most of the season was getting our connection going because we knew that we could be really terminal there and we worked a lot on it and I feel like our range right now at the slide is really good as well even running like the B or the A like a little tighter to the setter so I think it's been really helpful for our pins but what do you think Madison? It's been incredible I mean you have to respect the slide queen you can't just dip out to the outside and if you do then like be my guest but um, I mean it opens so much for us, and um, I mean, there's a lot of teams be like, slide, slide, slide. I'm like, all right, great, they're going the slide. I have free range, I'm 1v1. So, um, I mean, the connection with them too has just grown so much, and um, obviously it's confidence for them, but it gives our team so much confidence knowing we're gonna have more space um, and more opportunities to hit different shots and whatnot. But yeah, it's great. I think we need a t-shirt that says, respect the slide queen. I know. <laughs> We can go here. Give me my credit, guys. <laughs> For all three, and Coach, I want to start with you. Tampa has hosted lately the NCAA football final, two Frozen Fours and a women's basketball championship, and there hasn't been an empty seat. You're going to come out tomorrow night, and there's going to be 21,000 screaming fans. What's that emotion going to be for you? Well, it's, for me, it's about seeing where the sport has come. And that's where, like, that's where I look at it, because I've been around for a long time. But where the sports come, how big it's growing is so much fun. But I mean, if you look at Texas and the way that we travel, it's pretty crazy. We went to Houston, we set the all time uh, attendance record for a women's sport. Then a couple weeks later, we went to TCU and did the same thing. So we're used to playing in big crowds. Um, you know, Stanford is probably one of the ones that we're not used to playing in because we're, we, we draw so well. Um, and it's, it's awesome to be here in Tampa. Uh, we hope the fans get behind us. and. Uh, we're really excited to see 21,000. What, what an amazing 
accomplishment for where these, this sport has grown and thanking all the former coaches and the players that have come before this group to, to establish that and the media. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I mean, watching national championships and big matches growing up and just seeing how many more people come out to support and also just the viewership online and people watching at home is awesome. I mean, the energy is unmatched and I think people underestimate how much we feed off of that. Um, and we hear everyone in the crowd screaming for us and um, Greg is an awesome place to play. It's super loud and the environment's really feisty and fun, but um, yeah, it's really great for the sport and it's inspiring and I'm excited to see how much, it's, how much more it's gonna grow um, in the upcoming future, so it's exciting for sure. Yeah, I love playing in really loud, packed environments, whether they're for us or against us. It really gets me going, so I'm really excited for that tomorrow. And just, I've been in college for six years now, and just seeing where the sport has gone from 2018 to now has been so incredible. Um, I'm sad that I'm leaving when it's getting really crazy, but it just goes to show all that everyone behind the scenes and involved is doing to make sure our sport keeps growing. So hoping for many, many more sold out Final Fours. I think the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, you can see it continuing to grow. So it's just, it's a matter of getting people to get behind it and keep pushing it and keep growing it and be committed to it. Anything further for coach and the student athletes? Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Good Thank luck you this week. Thank, Thank you. you.